Hello again, Akron fans, and welcome back to another replay cast. I'm Shredder 33 your host. This is Nail vs. Rockmox on Rooftop Showdown. Nail is playing Vekir in the... I believe that's Nail. Yes, it would be. Nail is Vekir in the east side of the map, and Rockmox is playing CISO on the west side of the map. This is a map we've seen several times very recently, so you don't need to go over too much. Small map, expansion to the north, the south, and the center. Big expansion to the center. That's the one to mainly go for if you think you can get away with it. Nail, building up economy, not going, doesn't look like he's going for a rush strategy. Rockmox, he is going for very fast importer. He looks like he's going for a rush strategy. Actually, let me see, this is a marine going at, no, it's special going at, he's just scouting with that. But that early importer is actually not indicative of anything. He could be going for a rush strategy, but really the way the resources are set up now, it's actually, the 300 LC you get to start, you can build three RPs and an importer with that money. So it's, it's fine. Like, it's nothing really special. If he builds a factory, however, then, if that's his next building, then we know he's going for a rush. Now, Nail, on the other hand, is... He is going heavily for economy. He's getting a fourth LCRP. Probably going to get a fifth one, though on a map like this, I don't know if I'd recommend that. I say I don't know, because it really depends on what Rockmox is doing. If he goes for a proxy strategy, especially, that would be terrible. But if he's going for a fairly economic build himself, then going for economy is fine. So Nail does not appear to be intent on rushing. He is going for a 5th RP on QP, in fact. So it looks like he's going to go for a slow vehicle strategy. Scouting out with his Veer class units, he will see what Rockmox is up to. And Rockmox is going for a factory next. He is definitely going for a rush strategy here. Probably going for a very quick 8. Actually, he did ship to Q Plasma. Which leads me to believe he might be trying a Lancer strategy. It's not especially likely. It's not a common thing for players to do. But... If you're going for pure ATHC, then you don't need to worry about QP that much. You need to worry about it since they cost QP, but Lancers are what are really QP heavy. However, I'm not 100% sure since he hasn't actually committed to that from the looks of it, to that switch of the RP, and he would need two RPs on QP in order for a Lancer rush to be really useful. So we'll see in a minute, but I don't think he is going to be going too heavily for Lancers. It wouldn't surprise me though if he did, given that he has shifted his RP over and not simply built another, or waited to build another one. Because like I said, with with the 40 Q QP you start with, you can build two ATHCs no problem. And that's more than enough to help defend if you're going for a semi-economic strategy. So full-on rush strategy, That this is what this looks like. Now Nail, hmm, Nail's actually jumped back to the 32 second mark, right at the start of the game. He might be changing... No, he doesn't seem to be changing his strategy intentionally. I... He probably just hasn't actually changed what the Zion Veer is doing yet. He is moving his Shin Veer up towards the north side of the map. Or trying to, but... It and the Tethveer are kind of competing on where to go. But, yeah, he's trying to move his Shin Veer to the north of the map. Probably trying to build a foundation up there, get a quick expansion there. It's... Like I said, at this point... There's the ATHC. So, Rockmox is going for a rush, as I mentioned before. He is also sending out his Marines so that he can expand to the south when he needs to. But that rush strategy is going to be the big one. And that's... One ATHC is coming up now. I'm not sure where the second is. Hmm. This is unusual. Normally, they build two. Nope, that's his... That's his Special Ops and Marine. Special Ops being almost dead, by the way. I'm not sure why didn't he didn't have to stop to heal itself up. But... Depot is being built, Zion Pulsar is being built up at the 3 minute mark, so kind of a late Zion Pulsar, but this is, like I mentioned, a slow vehicle build. So, Rockmox is not actually building that RP yet. Oh, he was trying to build the RP, he didn't have money. So he's probably just using, so for the looks of it, he's using the ATHC to cover an expansion attempt, not actually using it so much for rushing. In that case, I have no idea why he moved his RP to QP, really, that... You don't need to do that if you're only going for ATHCs as cover. If you're going for ATHCs as a rush, getting two or three ATHCs, using them to attack as your main attack force, then yes, definitely. Put that RP on QP and just pump out ATHCs. But if you're trying to build an expansion like this, why? You don't need the QP that quickly. It's, he's flooding in QP, as we can see right now. 72 QP and nothing to spend it on unless he starts switching over to Lancers, which would not be a bad idea. Against Vekir, Lancers would be a good idea Though Nail, going for a slow vehicle strategy, does have the resources to switch over to Teth Pulsers if he needed to. Unlike, say, an all-in rush strategy that we saw God doing in the first game, with this sort of strategy, it's easier to switch over anti-air. 
And that Shinveer is not doing anything. Nail hasn't actually used it for anything yet. I wait with bated breath to see what it's up to, but I'm guessing it's just foundation. Probably in the north center of the map, or near the north center of the map to take that, use it for himself. And... No, that's something we've seen before, is not... Nail is just double checking this time over and over again, make sure he has it just right. And Rockmox, there's the ATHC I mentioned. The green time wave is going to be carrying over the Zion Pulsar being built, so... That first Zion Pulsar is built up. And Nail jumping back to the 313 mark will be... Let's see, there's Tethbeer just sitting there to see what's going on. He doesn't have enough money to build a comma, but I recommend he does so. But anyway, it is distracting the ATHC regardless. So that ATHC will take a bit longer to get to the base. It will allow the second Zion Pulsar to be built up, and that will block off the ATHCs no problem. And in case you're wondering about what I mentioned about damage reduction earlier against artillery... Zion Churchers are the only unit that had that sort of damage reduction. ATHCs used to, but since they no longer cloak, it didn't really make sense. And also, it actually turned out that having that damage reduction meant that there was no way for Vector to defend against ATHCs, pretty much. Which is kind of embarrassing. Anyway, enough about balanced reasoning. On to the game! So, the ATHC will be coming along once the players are really com- I'm surprised he's spending so much time micromanaging this attack. It's... I mean, there wasn't really many options to go for at this point in the playable past, and now both players are, well, no, both players are kind of out of chrono energy. Rockmox more than Nail. But Nail, here we go. Now here's the ATHC coming in, and this is going to be, like I said, an easy win for Nail. There's no way that ATHC can survive. So Rockmox is only real best bet at this point is to move the ATHC back and just echo it out. But nope, not going for that. He is going for another RP or trying to, but like I said, this Q this RP on QP is not doing him any favors, unless he converts it. He really does need to have another RP on LC, which he's getting now, but just... If he's going for a fast expansion strategy, you need to have pretty much all LC. Except the minimum of QP you need to build the units you need to defend. And there's a DHC, so Rockmox has moved it back far enough, it will not die. Nail, however, not moving forward to attack it yet, probably will pretty soon. But he is not at the moment, and there we go, there's that foundation I was wondering about. That Shinveer is building up to the 524 mark, and Nail jumping back to the 502 mark to... Ah, he does have a comm hub! Yay! I'm not the only one who builds them. Anyway. <laughs> so he does have a comm hub up. We'll be able to scout out this section of the map, and also we'll make it a bit hard to see, because it's right in this little corner, little nook. However, Rockmok's not actually sending out any units, so at this point it's not doing any good. But it might. It might help out in the future. Not the best alley for it. I think this area here would probably be a bit better as a warding spot. Stick your comm hub right there. And that will scout out the main drag of the map. Because most units just attacking straight from the main base to main base are going to be driving through this section of the map. They're not necessarily going to be driving through this section of the map. They're probably not going to be, actually. They'd likely avoid that. Just the way that the, the area is laid out. The way the piping is laid out on, the, on this rooftop. And... The HTC has decided to attack once again, Rockmox losing that in a hurry. So Nail will once again defend quite effectively, and this foundation is just sort of sitting here. Nail likely is waiting for that just to get enough money that he can justify getting air units. Right now, just setting up his expansions, making sure he can control that. Now admittedly, having a comm up here is not a terrible idea if you have an expansion here, because if units are going down to this expansion, they are going to cross through this section. Unless they go over here and then sneak around here, but they aren't going. If they're going straight from main base to this expansion here, they're going to cross over this area, so you will see them coming. So in that respect, it's not a bad placement. Actually, it's a better placement if he's just worried about this one expansion. But if he's worried about general attacks, this corner here is probably the best. And Rock Mox moving up an ATC, probably. No, he's not going to for, for the north. He that's rather surprising. Actually, deploying a special op, why? Is he going for a mass infantry strategy? I think he's going for a mass infantry strategy. I don't know why he's going for a mass infantry strategy. Well, not mass, but some infantry. Granted, CSO infantry aren't terrible against Vecchio vehicles, actually. Zion Pulsers can be fended off... One or two Zion Pulsers can be fended off by a group of half a dozen or so CSO infantry. But even with that, I'm a little bit surprised at that particular approach. And an annex being built towards the north, so Nail going for a very solid expansion towards the north, and has a ton of money, and yeah, I think he's going for either chronoporting or 
Frankly, I'm not sure what. That's a lot of money saved up that he had further in the future. Near the unplayable past, that's still a fair amount of money. You still could be building quite a bit with it if you had the chrono energy for that. The only thing that comes to mind is lack of chrono energy. And, ah, that combo up has been spotted. So we'll have to move out of the way and make sure that doesn't get attacked too heavily. But, of course, skip teleport for defense! Yes, because of course Vecchio can self-teleport their vehicles. And Nail is going for the center expansion. That's kind of ballsy, especially... I mean, he does have the... Like I said, he does have the comm up here. You can see what's going on. But that's still a pretty risky move going for that particular center expansion. This one's actually a bit less risky. No, I don't think of it. Yeah, it is a bit less risky, I think. It's a bit more on the main drag, but it's also got less of an attack angle. Like, there's fewer angles to attack it from. Whereas this expansion here, there's more angles to attack it from. And it's also right on the path towards the south expansion... The South Natural Expansion, which is a juicier target than the North Natural Expansion, given the number of resource crates there. Hmm, I'm going to have to think about that one. I may have distributed the resource crates in a poor way. But we'll see. Right now, Nail, however, is going for this expansion. It is a risky move, but it could pay off. He is, however, not building any other vehicles or building an aerial control center. Not 100% sure why. He doesn't have a lot of current energy for it, though, which might explain it. He is... Clearly spending a lot of that current energy building up resource processors around the map. Though still he has four orders available. He could use those to build the aerial control center of Mewtwo. And the harassment attack. So Nail ready the unplayable pass coming into Rockmox's base and dealing a lot of damage. Rockmox building a macrofab rather late in the game, actually. I mean Rockmox, he has quite a few resources in the bank. Yeah, that's coming in quite late in the game. Macrofab usually would come in about four minutes earlier if he's going for a solid macrofab strategy. Yeah, I'm not sure why all that money's in the bank. The only reason that comes to mind is chrono energy restrictions. Which is why I always say, micro in the past, macro in the present. Jump around the timeline to macro, because that's the only reliable way to spend all your money. And if you need to, change it up further in the past, if you need to change your unit composition. But, don't waste your chrono energy doing your macro in the past, or let your micromanagement burn all your chrono energy and prevent you from building more units. Because while Akron tends to be a game of few units, it's still important to build them. Anyhow, Nail is able to, with his Iron Pulsar, take out all the units coming in. Like I said, it takes about half a dozen infantry to deal with. Oh no, actually, Rockmox managed to... Well, managed to scare off the Zion Pulsar. It didn't kill it. Just scared it off. Like, Nail just retreated it, teleported it away. And finally getting the Aerial Control Center I was wondering about before. And here's a Shin Tercher. So I guess he was just waiting to get enough money to be reliably able to spend it on that. Makes sense. Anyway, this expansion is going... Expansion attempt is going to fail unless he undoes that foundation construction over in the north. Rockmox, on the other hand, is getting a heavy cruiser. I... I... I don't know. I... Yeah. Y you don't see this much. I'm... Okay. Well. That's new. He is getting a Mar tank, however, that is normal. But a heavy cruiser as your main assault force is a little bit unusual at this stage in the game. It's a little bit early. Granted, Nail is going pretty heavily for anti ground, so it's not a terrible idea. It's just kind of putting all your eggs in one basket. Granted, the infantry are, are here, they're going to help out a bit, but that heavy cruiser is kind of putting all the eggs in one basket. I'm not going to lie. It could work, though. Given that Nail has not built up a lot of units, he has built up... Unless both players are going for Chronoport, and that could be a thing they're each going for, but I don't... No, they, they would save up more than that. Anyway, sorry, I... Not something relevant yet, but what is relevant is that Nail has mostly anti-ground forces, no anti-air forces, but it has plenty of time and resources back in the past to deal with air if he needs to. But the one heavy cruiser... Hmm, okay, building more Mar tanks, that could that is gonna be more reliable. Heavy cruiser has support, I really don't know. If he has machinery, i let's okay, let's check the cost. Heavy cruiser, 13106. Tornado, 8095. Huh. Okay, Tornado's a bit more effective against ground, granted. But if he doesn't know what Nail is up to, it's actually not terribly cost ineffective. It's still a little bit odd, though. I still think a Tornado would be more useful. Yeah, even Nail's noticing that. It's Yeah, that's kind of odd. Why is... <laughs> okay, so... 
Yeah, why is there a heavy cruiser here? Okay, actually, I know why it's a heavy cruiser here. Because it's a big, cool-looking unit. That's why. And it's something I kind of call the battle cruiser effect, which is that when playing a game, especially with new players, typically the compulsion is to build the biggest, most expensive, strongest unit and try to build as many of them as possible. Because they're the biggest, most expensive, strongest unit and therefore must be the best. And to be fair, heavy cruisers are actually a pretty good generalist unit. They're simply slow, as molasses. And expensive. And I know they are hierarchied right now, but even if they aren't hierarchied, they're still slow as molasses. So, it... It's not a bad unit, but it's pretty expensive for what it can do, and unless you know your opponent is going heavily for a mixed strategy, and you can't easily deal with one or the other, then it's not a terrible idea. But right now, it's not the best idea. The Wilmy Nail will have a slightly harder time with Teth Churchers, but not that much harder time. The Teth Churcher should do okay. If he gets two or three of them, they'll do fine. Teth Churcher, Shin Churcher support. Actually, no. I, I, sh I would recommend going for some more ground as well. Air units are fairly expensive, so I don't think he'd be able to cost-effectively get an air army in time. Certainly won't be able to get an air army in time, given that Rockmox is going on his assault. And Nail building up a depot in the north, so he is definitely committed to this north expansion as well. Not just that... Not just a foundation and back of, or sorry, not just an annex and back of foundations. Bit surprised he hasn't built a lot of Zion Veers out of that for more expansions, but he is going, wow, he's taking Rock Mox's North Natural. That's pretty audacious. Actually, gotta say, all of Nail's expansion plans are pretty audacious. Now, he is probably going for Gate Tech. And there comes the attack, so Heavy Cruiser coming in, like I said, it, it does have the same attack power versus ground and air. 14 damage per second versus ground and air. Compared to Tornod, which is slightly more against ground, but a fair bit less against air. Until you get aerospace, then it just kicks butt against every, against ground. Just point that out. Because, yeah, Tornad... Well, it is more powerful. It's about 18 damage per second against ground with aerospace upgraded. But Rockmox does not have that. He has machinery, and that is it. That's all he has. And looks like Nail just getting Halcyon class. And Rockmox waiting. He's decided not to go for that main attack yet, but he... Okay, the 15 minute mark, he is definitely going for the attack, and dealing a lot of damage with it, too. I'm not sure what Nail's planning to do with all this money, but he does have this backup base. He does have enough money for chronoporting, so I think we all kind of know what's going to happen. Nail's going to research chronoporting, he's going to use his backup base to shift in a bunch of units to save this main base, and defeat this attack from the future. That's what I'm calling. Now, let's see if that actually happens. So, here's Gate Tech, that's the first step. Second step, of course, is building the vehicles in the secondary depot. He has no aerial control center in the secondary depot, though, which means it's going to be a bit harder to get a great defensive force, but he will still be able to get a good defensive force. Teth Halcyons, Zion Halcyons together should do fine, or just a ton of Zion Pulsers and Teth Pulsers. That could work, too. We'll see what he's up to, but he's so close to the unplayable past, I'm not sure what he's planning on doing with that. The blue time move will carry the chronoporting research forward, but it might not be enough. I will have to see... At this point, 15 minute mark, Rockmox has gone for the attack again. He had aborted the attack for one time wave, but going for it once again and very easily taking out what Nail has. But we'll see what Nail does with the chronoporting when he gets it. He doesn't have a slipgate up, however. Still needs to afford that, still needs to get more vehicles. He doesn't have a lot of money for either. He has a lot of expansions around the map, which could help, but his main base is being torn apart. So, of course, this is not necessarily permanent, this is not causally stable. And Zion Halcyon coming, but this actually could... This could turn it around. No, it won't turn it around. But it will at least help. It'll at least tear apart quite a few of the units that are there. It'll slow down the assault, at any rate. Buying Nail some much-needed time. But he needs a slipgate in this base. And he has not built one yet. Rockmox, about a minute up from here. Not researching anything. He has another Heavy Cruiser, however. Taking care of that comm hub. So, two Heavy Cruisers, I suppose, is okay. I know it sounds weird. One Heavy Cruiser is odd. Two Heavy Cruisers is... Well, it's still eggs in two baskets. So you double the number of baskets in case something goes wrong. But that's a lot of eggs. And you don't want those ending up on your face. Still, I think Rockmox's assault strategy may have paid off. Though, like I said, it's not necessarily the best idea at this stage in the game. But it clearly was a good idea in this particular game. Anyway, we see a slipgate being built up, and the Heavy Cruiser just out of range. Huh. Rock Mox is just missing that. Well, that's unusual. So yeah, Nail getting a slipgate at the 16 minute mark as soon as he can. Right at the edge of the unplayable past. Or very close to the edge of the unplayable past. But his main base has been destroyed. He only has about a minute or so 
which is about the build time of the Slipgate. So he needs to get a bunch of vehicles up right now, and then build them up and hierarchy them up. And I don't know if this is a play with Chronicle with Commanders on. I don't think it was. So he'll need to use all of his Chrono Energy to send it back. I don't think he'll be able to save his main base, but he might be able to take out the army that Rockmox had while it was being assaulted a bit by the defense forces in Nail's main base. But Nail, man, he is in a tight spot. We'll see what he manages to do with it. Rockmox, on the other hand, like I said, building up everything he can. He is he's spending his money, that's for sure. And attacking the main base, attacking... Sorry, the, not the main base. He is attacking Nail's secondary, but the Slipgate is up. Slipgate is up, and it's up towards the future as well, so Nail can jump into the future and start actually using that. He does have Repel on, so it will allow him to get rid of any units that get too close with the Slipgate, but he's not using it for Chrono Porting yet. He does have enough money to do so. He should be building vehicles. But now any defense attempt will be a will be a paradox minefield. That's a very important note. Any attempt that Nail does to defend this could very well result in defending it from a base that doesn't actually exist yet. Or it doesn't exist in the future, it has been destroyed now. Could cause a paradox. If he starts building air units, it will cause a paradox, that's for sure. But he was only focusing on our Teth Halcyons. So he could very well safely get through this. But we'll have to watch out for paradoxes, because that... We are getting dangerously close to Paradox Country. Teth Halcyon being built up, but won't be able to be doing that much damage, unfortunately. Might be, might be able to get rid of the Heavy Cruiser, though. No, no, it is not. It, very close, but not quite enough. Nail doesn't have enough money. To, like, Nail's only limit really is Chrono Energy at this point. And he's jumped back right deep in the Impelable Pass. I think he went a bit too far there. And it looks like he's... Whoa, how do you do that? Oh, I see. I guess propagation from... Hmm. Must have been propagation from the main base defense. He managed to actually hold that off. Hold on a sec. Nail is not chrono boarding now. The ATCs are still alive here. The heavy cruiser has moved away from the looks of it. Yes, it's moved around to the other side. But Nail is prepping up to chrono port. He did get a bit of breathing room. Rockmox's maneuvering allowed him some room to chrono port back these two units. And, well, okay, one of them. Chrono port back the Teth Halcyon. So at least that'll be able to get rid of this heavy cruiser before it deals any secondary damage. Though the main heavy cruiser has been sent up here, so it's not dealing any damage, but it's not taking any damage either. Though this Teth Halcyon is losing a lot of health in the process, it will be successful, but just barely. Still, Rockmox losing that heavy cruiser in the Unplayable Past might be a bit of a blow. I'm not certain how much, though. Back here, it looks like... Yeah, it looks like that heavy cruiser might actually make a difference. So we'll have to see how that works out. On the green time, I believe, is the one that is relevant here. Now, at the same time, Marines are coming to the North Expansion, so Nail's still getting very heavily assaulted in his peripheral bases. See that South Expansion has been destroyed, and Rockmox still dealing quite a bit of damage to his main base. Not as much damage as I'm sure he'd like to, because, of course, this is this Slipgate is repelling everything, but he is still able to deal quite a bit of damage. And it looks like... Nail is... No, his his current board is definitely successful. So, no Paradox is there. But, Nail doesn't really have a Teth Halcyon where he wanted it to be. And his Zion Halcyon has taken a lot of damage, healing up what it can. His Foundations are doing a great job healing up the Zion Halcyon. And Depot as well. But that's still a lot of... Actually, I'm, I'm really surprised Nail hasn't built more units. He has tons of resources for building units. Really needs to build more units. And it looks like another Chronoport. And yes, Chronoport back to help itself out. Zion Halcyon, making sure that nothing goes on there. The Heavy Cruiser, Rockmox is doing a lot of maneuvering with the Heavy Cruiser, making sure that it doesn't get killed, keeping it out of the way in general, keeping it out of danger. So this is back uh, first in a Martank, actually dealing, taking a lot of damage this iteration through from Nail Zion Halcyon. But it looks like those were probably not the Martanks that Rockmox is using. Are they not? No, Rockmox must have built more Martanks, because there were... Many more Martanks before Nail jump back to Chronoport and deal with all of them. I mean, Rockmox does not have Chronoporting, so the only person who can throw around the timeline in the Unplayable Past is Nail. But Rockmox, like I said, has been maneuvering around, dodging with his Martanks, making sure to avoid battles. Though he did lose them all. Yeah, he's lost them all, actually. So that Chronoport defense did pay off for Nail. And as you can see, he is looking like he's going for it again. Yes, he is actually saying another Chronoport looks like deep in the Unplayable Past. Or, 
Not. Nope, maybe not. Nope, deep in the playable past. Yes, he is, but not actually doing anything with that, just for defense, just in case. Make sure those Mar tanks die even faster. Though, like I said, Nail losing a lot of peripheral bases, so he doesn't have a lot of income. He has these two RPs, that's about it. That, oh, and he has a Shinveer here in case he wants to build, no, Zymveer is what he needs, but a Shinveer in case he wants to build more foundations. Though at this point, the south base has been saved. I guess that heavy, heavy cruiser he killed with the Teth Halcyon that he chronoported back must have killed that south base, and thus he saved it by destroying it in the past. Well, that works, I suppose. And now Nail, having defended his bases, needs to get on the offensive, building an aerial control center. So we'll be able to build up an area to actually deal with this. He needs to get on the offensive, needs to rebuild some of the resource processors he had before, getting rid of whatever harassment forces are there as well. And from that, he should be able to chronoport back into the unplayable past and not do anything. Was that meant to be an uppercut, or was that not? I'm not sure. Well, anyway. Once again, we have our chronoport, and it looks like it was not meant to be an uppercut. There doesn't seem to be any uppercutting going on with that. He didn't actually appear to... No, he must have killed something. There's damage going on. Nope, that's defensive damage. So yeah, Nail just focusing on defense with a chronoport at Zion Halcyons. And they're doing a great job of that, too. Now, it looks like Rockmox has built a second heavy cruiser at this point. So he does have... Yes, because there are no heavy cruisers on the map at the moment. So he has built a second heavy cruiser. Or two more heavy cruisers, rather. He's definitely rebuilding the army he had. So, right... And building Lancers, too. This is a good idea. Build quite a few of these, because... They are a decently powerful area. If he gets aerospace as well, that would work very nicely. Oh, I see. Sorry. Nail's pointing out in the chat that he actually had some chronofrag issues that came up while he was doing this, so... Some of the re-chronoports are him trying to fix those. Fair enough. Now, in case you're wondering, when you chronoport, if units that you chronoport are occupying the same space as units that were there in the past, in the point of time you chronoported to, they will crash into each other, and whoever's the weakest, whoever's the less, least HP dies, and the other one takes as much damage as the other, as the group of units that died had HP. And that's possibly a group of units. So if you had a bunch of infantry occupying the same space as the Zion Halcyon, then the Zion Halcyon would die and a bunch of the infantry would take damage. Or the infantry would all die and the Zion Halcyon would take damage. I can't remember. Never actually tried that one. But basically, it does account for groups. Anyhow, Lancer's quite a few being built up. Rockmox should get aerospace. No, he doesn't have the money for it. Never mind. He shouldn't get aerospace. He has no money to actually afford that. Nail, however, does have plenty of cash. I'm. Okay, now he's going for mass conversion. Now we should see a lot of units being built up, or at the very least, massive uppercuts. And is he? He's not paused. He is still fast forwarding. Rockmux, on the other hand, just prepping his armies for one final assault. Gonna have to do that a couple times though, because of the way the chronoporting works, of course. And oh, speaking of chronoporting, well, teleporting more, to be precise. Massive attack right next to the edge of the Impalable Pass, but the Heavy Cruiser is unfortunately there at the time this attack occurs. Able to deal enough damage to take care of everything going on here. Rockmox back to the point. Yes, Rockmox is doing this. This is actually what's going on. There's no changes to this. Rockmox had not moved his Heavy Cruisers over quite yet. So we'll be able to take care of Nail's forces. I'm a little surprised Nail did not chronoport those. He is, however, teleporting them back to retreat. And doing a lot of QP conversion, but not spending it on units yet. I really don't know why. I mean, maybe he's doing it because he can't chronoport them all, but honestly, there's no reason not to. Unless he's saving up for weaponry. I don't know why he'd be doing that, given his strategy right now. It's rather odd. He, let's see, does he have a sign view around the map? He does. He is actually expanding towards Rockmox's South Natural. So he is getting more resources, but going for a chronoport. Finally, okay, so he's paused, getting ready for another uppercut, and we will see that... There we go. So the upcut has hit around the time that the other units were hitting, so at least it'll be a bit of a reinforcement. But it doesn't look like it'll be in... No, it will be enough! Oh wow, that actually will be enough. That managed to take out that Martank and Lancer just in time. So, looks like Nail will actually be able to be successful in taking out Rockmox's forces before they do anything. So yeah, Rockmox kind of in a tight spot, having lost map controls. That should be obvious given that Nail is taking Rockmox's expansions. Like, Rockmox's main asset is these heavy cruisers. That's really what he's got going for him at this point. 
And Nail has done a decent job taking care of those. And here goes Special. So he's going for a Calm Jam with his... No. Yes, Calm Jam. It was not Halcyon. That was not changed. Sorry, there was some experimental mod stuff we did with moving Calm Jam around. Don't worry about it. Designed Halcyon, however, will be able to Calm Jam everything going in. And... Yes, yeah, Nail's pointing on the chat. There is... The Calm Jam... Sorry, the RPs are being built in order to be used as ways of... Sorry, RPs are being used from the conversion. That's what he's built, converting for, not units. Though he does have LC that he could build units as well as build RPs. Or just build a lot more RPs, either way. Though I would go for a healthy mix of the two. And he is finishing off Rockmox's economy, making sure to get rid of what little economy Rockmox had. Definitely keeping himself in a safe position, that's for sure. Rockmox trying to take care of the forces that are going to chrono back before they do, but not nearly in time. Did damage the Teth Halcyon a little bit. A little curious how that'll affect things. And let's see, that Teth Halcyon is... Well, it is slightly damaged, and... It, no, it won't really affect things. Because this Teth Halcyon of the North is the one that's really dealing the damage. I mean, yeah, it's not destroying that. This Heavy Cruisers will live. That is worth pointing out. But, that being said, the, ma the rest of the base is being completely torn to shreds. So the Heavy Cruisers and MFB are the only thing really left, and even that is kind of tenuous. Rockmox is not in a healthy spot, as I mentioned several times. Oh, losing a Heavy Cruiser. No, never mind, he's actually lost everything. His Heavy Cruiser's going down too, and he doesn't have enough money for the MFB from the looks of it. Getting an HHC to try to defend, but that will not be enough. Zion Halcyons will do just fine against those. And I believe that will be game pretty soon. Nail will probably go for one final attack if he needs to, but no, it looks like the Immobile Past is completely Nail's domain. Other than this Lancer here and a couple infantry. Those don't need to be worried about. And this Heavy Cruiser here, which is too damaged to be worried about either. So Rockmox basically has lost this game. The one Heavy Cruiser, like I said, this is what I was wondering about the Heavy Cruisers. Though they were doing a decent amount of damage, but they are a lot of money that could have been spent on... Okay, I suppose it was a terrible spending option. But they could have been spent on either Tornads for more ground anti-ground specialization, or on a mix of, well, on Twin Mars and Twin Mars, or a mix of Mars and Frigates, which is a common strategy. Or given that Nail is going almost exclusively ground, just pure Mar, really. Pure Mar tank would have done great, or Twin Mar would have done great too. But it looks like Nail has taken his map control, and he has his economy, and Rockmox has a few units around the map, but they aren't doing much. The Lancer, an ATHC, a couple infantry. The Martank looks like it's been destroyed. He is actually trying to rebuild what he can, however. It looks like Nail did retreat. That assault did get retreated. It is healing up for one final push. Probably one final uppercut push. And the Heavy Cruiser coming back to try to... Well, this would have been what provoked... No, no not provoked Nail to retreat, because the Heavy Cruiser is dead. But Nail still retreats. So, Rockmox has a very small window, but I think there's no way he's going to get out of this. He doesn't have chronoporting, he doesn't have enough units. I mean, Nail has a unit advantage, Nail has map control, Nail has chronoporting. He has control over the timeline, over the map, over everything. He's just got total control. So, it's just a matter of time for Rockmox GG's. I hate to put that so bluntly, but that is pretty much the case. Rockmox will be probably going for one final push. Nail, here's that Corona Port I mentioned. And Rockmox, from his point of view, he's trying to expand. Valiant effort, I must say. Moving his RPs over to the South Expansion, sees that there's no way he's getting that expansion. And Nail, of course, with his final uppercut, will probably tear apart everything that Rockmox had, except for the units scattered around the map. But yeah, I'm a bit surprised Nail has not built as many units as he could have. Really quite surprised. But yeah, with Rockmox... I mean, Heavy Cruisers are a weird thing, because they are good generalist units, but Nail didn't have enough air units to really justify that. One Heavy Cruiser maybe could have worked, but then after that, switching to Tornads and... or switching to Martanks, like Martanks, Twin Mars, maybe some Frigates, maybe some ATHC, more ATHCs. What else is there? Yeah, that would have been a pretty good mix. Tanks could have worked, too. If he was worried about anti-air, Heavy Tanks are pretty decent anti-air units. Though we didn't have ground units to get those, but tanks are good generalists and decent anti-air, and heavy tanks are good anti-air units. They're pretty much the dedicated late-game anti-air for a CISO. 
But of course, Nail's going entirely for ground Halcyon class units. Note that most Vector players will go primarily for ground Halcyon class units. Shin Halcyons typically aren't cost effective enough for what they can do. Though with specials, Nanite Infection is very scary, and Shin Halcyons can do that. And Nail pointing out in chat that Mars and Twin Mars would be ripping his depots to shreds. Which is a very good point. That's exactly what I mean. Mars and Twin Mars are scary. Absolutely frightening. And Nail looks like he's going for more defensive uppercuts. I'm not sure why he isn't going for offensive uppercuts. At this point. Because Rockmox has lost everything. Frankly, I'm kind of curious why Rockmox hasn't simply thrown in the towel. Though I do admire that sort of tenacity. Still wondering where... So he has Marine here. Not rebuilding with it. He has Marine here. Not rebuilding with it. He has Marine... Or he had Marine here that he was rebuilding with. But otherwise not really rebuilding. This is most curious. Most curious. I'm really not sure why he's not rebuilding. Ah, here we go. That sounds like foundation. Nail continuing to build more foundations. He has a Bastion as well that he had built up back when Rockmox was. And that... I really don't see what he's what Rockmox is waiting for. Come on, Rockmox. Just do something. Okay, well... I think it's pretty clear Rockmox has been defeated. I don't really want to drag this out any longer than it has to be. I think I'm going to just... Give it another minute. See if Rockmox decides to just surrender. But I think this is all there really needs to be seen. So... I'll see what happens. Rockmox is going for one final harassment push around the map, but that this should be it. I really don't see any way out of this. Yeah, Zion Halcyon coming in, tearing out that that final harassment push. There's nothing Rockmox can do. So yeah, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed that, and that will be that'll be probably it for tonight. So, hope you enjoyed those games, and thank you for watching. Have a good night, everyone.